right I'm gonna get going now and the first thing I'm gonna do is show you my little doodah hack for using tape at the side of your head now I've got my two bits of tape here just on a bit of plastic that came out of um, the eyeshadows that I'm going to use um, and the first time I did like tape I just used medical tape which is like like this one here literally the sort of thing that they fasten your bandages with um, and I use that because it's not quite as sticky as um, cellar tape is um, and also you can get it so that it's uh, sensitive you know hypoallergenic so great stuff and it because it's kind of um, fibrous as well I think it's easier to put on now what I found was the first time I did it I just used the straight flat tape and I put it on my eye sort of like that and it, it came like out in a straight line from the side of my eye um, but I found that I thought hmm I'd rather it was just ever so slightly curved so I got one of my business cards and I trimmed it so that it was about right as to the curve that I wanted it to be hello Zoe um, and then I'm keeping this as a template now all I've done with my tape today is I put two pieces of tape and I drew um, on my tape just where that curve was drew it on that one and then flip the tape over because obviously you've got to do the opposite on your other eye I didn't think of that the first time I did it and I ended up with two for one side um, yeah flip flip your card over and do the same on the other side and then just trim your tape and I've just done that earlier because I thought it's fiddly and I probably get all flappy um, and I've just stuck them on a piece of plastic so that I can pull it off and put it on my eye now so got my first bit of tape and that's for this side so I'm going to try and do it in the video looking at it in the video so I'm going to stick that I don't want it to go right in I don't want it to go right from the very corner of my eye I'm happy for it to come out a bit but as you can see it's not too uh, sticky and it's easy enough to pull off a little bit right, I'm going to have that going a little bit higher upwards get my hair out of the way yeah I'm happy with that and then what I'm going to do I could rip that because it's rippable but I'm probably just going to trim it I hope I didn't cut my hair I didn't <laughs> right so that's one side on and I think it's okay certainly for, for what I want it for anyway I don't want it to um, hold in any sort of major wounds or bandages I just want it to make my uh, eyeshadow a bit neater. Now on the other side, I've fiddled with this already, it's gone bobbly. But let's see if I can get that on the other side now. Again, I'm trying to leave a li I don't want that right in the corner, I want to leave a little bit of space. So I've got it on there, I've got it on where I'm happy with it. And I'm going to try and just rip this bit off. Did it? Yeah. Right, so that may look a bit bonkers. But at least it gives you an idea to see how to use the medical tape and um, you'll see what the result is one time I used it and I just didn't like the result so once I took the medical tape off I just blended it out it's no biggie is it it's no biggie as we all know right I said today that I was going to use a new palette that I've got which is from Juvia's Place and it's the magic palette here it is my beautiful magic palette and what I've decided I'm going to use today is this one here which is an extremely pigmented very dark purple so I'll be using that for like a kind of smoky eye effect in the corners and stuff the one just above it which is um, sort of lovely prismatic purple lilac -y. Um, possibly this this pink one above it as well and then this one over here which is a bright red orange I'm actually going to use that as my first shade my first um, what, what you call it the above the crease shade or the the midway shade or the I don't know the one you put in first anyway my foundation foundation shade um, but what I've got to, what I've forgotten about 
because my got up. I'm an idiot. Um, is I didn't put any primer on, so I'll put a little bit on now. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I should really have put this primer on before I stuck my eye tape on. But I don't think it'll matter. Only if it does. No big whoop. So only makeup, isn't it, lovesies? So only makeup. Right, so a bit of eye primer on. And as usual for me, I'm just using the ordinary serum foundation, which is very lightweight. And this particular one is one shade lighter than my normal skin colour. So it gives a nice slightly lighter base for my eye stuff there i am looking even more piggy eyed but i don't mind because i know from experience we all do i don't panic about it now because i know that miracles are going to happen as the eyeshadow gets put on right so let's get going i'm going to get um a sort of dusty wusty blending brush and i'm going in with that transition shade I don't know. The first shade that I usually put on is like um, one that's going to go above the crease, not up to the eyebrows, and other stuff will probably go over it afterwards. And I'm going to try out this very intense um, ready orange. And it could go completely wrong. One thing I will say about Juvia's palette, Ju I always call it palace, Juvia's place palettes, is they are extremely pigmented. I mean, they are the bomb. And therefore, I always go in super gentle. I've got some on my little brushy brush here. What a pro days. Um, and I'm just going to go in and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm going in. And I'm going super gentle because I have no idea how intense that is. But you can see immediate payoff. And as I suspected with the shade, when you actually put it on the skin, instead of being a bright orangey it's actually a, a salmony pink which is just just right for what I wanted just what I wanted a sort of salmony pink so I put a little bit on that side didn't take much work I didn't need lots of swiping because this stuff is very pigmented so oh and the shade that I'm putting on now is called Koji okay a bit more Koji tapping off as usual although to be honest I think with this it doesn't matter whether you tap it off it's still going to be really intense I'm going in this side and I'm going to do the same thing just like um, a nice transition shade there it is going to be quite a bright look obviously you can tell already from this but never judge when you're halfway through it because you don't know what it's going to be like in the end and my intention is to darken up and give lots of shading with that dark purple color as we go along so that's my first transition shade and what i'm impressed with is exactly how easy that just goes on it's super great love it now i think my next step is going to be to have a little go with the dark purple and because what I'm going to use that for is quite a bit of things so I've been putting it on very very thick and intense so it is darkest to do eyeliner and a, a kind of wing but I'm also going to be using it under here to sort of give a toned effect and shape that um, first transition shade I'll show you what I mean and I've got my water I'm such a pro, I kid you not, I've got my water. Um, so I'm dipping it in my water, but I have learnt as well that if I dip it in my water, I just need to bob it off on my on my tissue, otherwise it's too wet and it's going to make the colour thing. So I'm getting a little bit of that on now because I'm going to do the intense stuff first. So I've got some very, very dark purple there and I'm going to go into the corner and start seeing how whether I'm gonna I might even have a wing you never know it could really take off and have a wing you never know right so I'm going in the corner watching my tape as well and seeing how that works it's good because um, if I go right in that corner I can see how intense that is and it's very intense so I don't need much I've gone 
on the top of my eyelashes just halfway. That's my usual go-to. And with this intense stuff, I might do like a kind of wing. That may get blurred out as we go along, but I've kind of done a wing. Because it's wet, it's bleeding a little bit, but as we know, it's all fixable and it's not going to go too far over because of my tape. All right, let's try the other side now. A little bit more on there and that brush is still quite damp, so I think that should be okay. Let's go on this side now. Hopefully you can see that. So I might not have positioned this tape quite as well as the other side. I've got like a little gap where it's not near the tape, but it's not bad. You, you're always going to find it slightly different with you, when you put the tape on because um, your eyes are different shapes. Well, most people's eyes are slightly different shapes. So you might find, like I find on this side, um, I don't have as much of a sort of cornery hood here. On this side, my hood seems to finish a few millimetres below my eye. So I have to do it differently on each eye. I think most people do. You just go with the floor and you get to know where your bit is. So I'm going again, sorry everybody, across to the middle, roughly. Thank you, Juvia's Place, for your lovely pigmentation, because this is super easy. I'm not having to re-dip or anything like that because <laughs> there's loads of pigment on it. Now then, um, I'm going to go, what did I do with the other eye? Yeah, a little way across, although my plan is to have that lilac under my eye as well and on my eyelid, so I'm only going halfway across. Okay, it's working quite well, isn't it? For me anyway. Yeah, cool. Right, okay. Now, what I want to do now is see if that one shade is okay to do the shaping that I really want to do. And I obviously don't want that as intense as I've used that shade at the corners because I used that wet and I used it with um, a flat, um, precise brush. Well, what I want to do now is just have a look on my brushes and uh, use maybe this one yeah so it's a smaller sort of fluffier brush because what i'm going to try and do is put a little bit under there actually i am going to use this to line out where my crease is first sorry we learn as we go okay so i'm gonna go in and just where my crease is and where i want the stuff to start oh about a bit much there I've just gone in with a line now. It looks proper messy, but I'm going to be blending. Blending. So I've just gone in with a line there with that wet brush because I'm going to be blending that up. Um, I did make a little bit of a nudge. You can probably see there. Prefer that to be gone. So a little bit wet on this cotton bud and take some of that off. Yeah, not much, but some. Yeah, that's a bit better okay now um, I'll do a little on the other side and that's really just so that when I do my powdery stuff I can go a little higher than that because I'm not using the powder brush to make a more defined line I sound like I know what I'm doing don't I, I really don't I'm just playing <laughs> but that's that's the plan that's in my head at the moment anyway okay so you can already see that's giving me some shape um, but I don't want it to be um, as harsh as it is so really I want that little tiny brush that I was going to do so I'm going to give that a little bit of a blend yeah that's better that's better that's better. So now we've not got as deep of an aubergine, but we've got that lovely um, ombreing happening. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Anyway, hi everybody. I can only um, I can only see you when I, when I lean back 
and then because I haven't got my glasses on just the things we sacrifice hello right so I'm going to do the same on there you can see the difference this side I've done a little bit of blending it out and this side not yet but I'm going to so let's get that done and another thing, no, it sounds like I'm advertising Juvia's Place. I'm not. I just find, I've just recently started using them and I find, I find them really nice. Um, but I will say the blending is really easy, probably because it's so pigmented. Just a few brushes and you can see that's, that's quite blended out now. It's coming close to it. I'm just going to look in my mirror because um, you get a different view. You can see yourself in the video, but you get a different view from when you're used to looking in the mirror. So I'm going to get a real life looking in the mirror look and see what I've got, what I've got so far. I can pout easier in the mirror as well. I'm used to it. Yeah, I think. That's what I was going for. Now, I may add more to that as I'm going along, but the, my next thing I want to do is get some of that lilac, um, the shade Fa Faso, Faso, on my lid and in the corner. Um, it goes without saying that I'm doing all of this before I put my mascara on, but I think most people do now, and I certainly do. But you know what? Before I joined Hooded Eyed Beauties, that's not what I did. Because I was foolish and I've learned since then. Do all your eyeshadow and all your makeup and then put your mascara on. Hey, thanks Hooded Eyed Beauties. So, I've now got my next shade which is called Faso. And I, I think you can see it's a lilac shade with a sort of prismatic, um, holographic type effect on it. So, and that's going on my lid oh lovely oh I'm sorry I really love lilacs does everybody else love lilacs I do I love them all right so I'm um, popping that into my corner I do that on a lot of my looks I know but I'm sticking with what I'm enjoying doing at the moment and what I'm enjoying seeing on myself um, and then it's up to you of course, every individual is different, isn't they? What bits they like and they like to emphasise. So, that's the fa that looks really nice, doesn't it? That's the Faso one, um, and I'm going to do the same on the uh, on the on the other eye. I get a little bit of extra water on that. Yeah. Thank you, my babes. All right, let's look. We're going on this side now. getting that and this flat brush just sort of pats it on rather than dragging it across although and um which if you've got younger eyes than me you might be more able to just do that nice sweep across but I find because my eyes are a bit crepe crepey I find I get a better result if I pat and blend pat and blend that's me pat and blend i'm really loving how this looks it's nice right uh, i'm gonna take that across a bit as well to meet up with that plum underneath now i should really swap that yeah that's good I don't quite oh I'm sorry ha <laughs> I'm back I was just behind the mirror don't worry I didn't go anywhere uh -huh. so I've taken that over at the bottom to sort of blend into that dark purple that I've got there so I've got the very dark in this corner going over to the nice and light over here it's a little bit uneven but I'll tidy it up afterwards your videos are my favorites well thank you I think is it joy thank you joy <laughs> I always like them because at the end of it I get a free makeup 
I'm sorry. I... Anyway, so let's look at look at my eyes now. And I, it had occurred to me that I might put a little of another shade in here that's called Zuba, which is um, a pinky peach shimmer. But actually, I'm quite liking how um, Koji worked up there. So I might just put a little extra Koji, but we'll see. I might well put some of that shimmer on and then right at the top, just a teeny bit of this lilac again. But it's all coming together quite nice, actually, if I say so myself. Let's look. Yeah. Now, I, did, I should have done my brows before I started, really, and I didn't. But next plan there's a shade here just show you it in the thingy let's see if I can get it that I might use to just blend up a little bit on my brow bone there um but I'm what I'm not sure about what's 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 stopping me is that sometimes um it's not a good idea to have a matte color like that and then another shimmer one and it might look odd but I'm gonna give it a go and if it does look odd I'm sorry please don't be cross with me right let's have a look and yes I'm saying yes I quite like that <laughs> sorry everybody else if you don't but um, I'm going with it I've done that with my finger because from past experience when you're trying to put shimmers on with with a say a blending brush you get lots of fallout so I've just put a little bit of that shimmer on and I might put some more of the um, matte just underneath to sort of fade off in that middle bit look at that dancing finger okay so let's have a look original brush I had the red on not too much, so a bit more over there to go in between. Yes, like it. A bit more over here to go in between. And what's happened there is because I put some of them in it, a little bit extra of the mat. Oh, sorry, that's a bit intense there. I put a little bit extra of the matte over the top after I've put that shimmer on. It sort of means that the shimmer itself's got a little ombre because it still shows through under the matte, but not as much. And so then it just seems to shimmer out a little bit more. Um, not as harsh, not a big, poof, you know what I mean? Okay, so I actually think I want a little bit more of the purple the dark purple to shape so I'm gonna do a teeny weeny bit more okay I'm going in there oh with a reasonably flat brush and what I do is I go into my crease and then like sort of flick it upwards into my crease and just sort of flick it upwards because I just want that a little bit more of that purple not lots but a little bit more So now I can see in the in the mirror, I can see the difference between this eye that I've got a bit more purple on and this eye. So I think. A little bit more purple works for me. And hey, and my eyes, so I'm going to do the same on the other eye. And we're getting close to the stage where. I would. Pull off that eye tape. Because I'm happy that it's done its job okay let me look I wiggle my eyes around because sometimes that gives me an idea of whether there's any bits I haven't blended out um, that are hidden by creases or wrinkles so got a little look I like this it's going nice Right, so the next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to peel off the tape, the big reveal. Are you ready? So because I've put most of my, my eyeshadow on now, and it's not, you can see it's not pulling my skin or anything. I was such a teeny bit maybe at the bottom there, but because it's that, uh, it's, uh, do you know what it reminds me of? Masking tape that you'd use. So it doesn't have the sort of stick, because you don't want it to, um, that, that some tapes would that you'd need to bond. But it's got enough to keep it in place. Now then. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. It still takes some getting used to when you've been used to like sort of scruffy edges. So, I'm now going to put a bit of mascara on. I'm going to use two different mascaras today. I'm going to use Maybelline Colossal because I find this one is the nice, nicer sort of fine defining one for my eye, eyelashes. Um, ooh, ooh, this one. I like this little mirror for uh, putting my mascara on and I've just remembered do your bottom light lashes first <laughs> oh I feel so accomplished ready so funny face ignore me so yeah I often forget that because I've done it so many times where I've done the top lashes first I often forget that really it does work miles better you put it on the bottom lashes first And this mascara I found, and I always end up using just the tip, not the brush itself. Um, it's great for putting like a thin coat that separates really well and uh, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, I've got a bit of a wibble in this finger because I've been using it too much. Let's move the finger out of the way. It's weird when you get those twitches, isn't it? Well, you'll get them. Hi Lane! It's nice to see you love. You love to see you. The thing is, I'm stuck with this face, so I might as well slap it everywhere else. I don't see why I should suffer alone. All right, let's get that. I've made a big blob there as well, you know me. Make the mistakes and clean up afterwards. I always make mistakes on the second eye. Do you do that? Always. First eye goes really smoothly and I suppose maybe I get cocky and then, and then oh my God, what have you done? I mean, it's going everywhere now because I think I've just given up. <laughs> no, it's not too bad, but I'll clean that up in a minute. Right, so what I'm trying to do with this lighter mascara is get a good separation on them bottom lashes which I think I have but look at that mess <gasps> need the cleaners in so to clean up that because I've got no under eye makeup on yet anyway that's fine just get a bit of water out of my little water pot that I've got over there a little roll There we go. Sorry, what was that? So what, um, who is it? Melissa, honestly, my eyes are blue, but what happens in a camera, a, a phone camera is that they're trying to get as many of the tones to look great as they can. And there's all sorts of algorithms that are set up there to do that. And sometimes it will offset that. It's not just the phone camera that makes my eyes look green. My glasses also do the same thing. So when the light's going through my glasses, it makes my eyes look green. But they're blue, actually. I suppose maybe on the greener side of blue. But um, So there you go. But it does look like I've got green eyes sometimes. Yeah, I quite like that, actually. I know the truth, though. And it's just... Right. Now, upper lashes, upper lashes, same thing. Colossal first, which I think has a nicer brush and is a more lightweight mascara. So I tend to use that, like I say, to separate 
my lashes. Still pretending like I know what I'm doing. Ha! But isn't that just life though? Don't we all just do that and we just get on with it and pretend like we know what we're doing? <laughs> and we don't. We just hope for the best. That's my life philosophy anyway. Oh my goodness. If I had my own makeup ch channel, it would be um, Life Lessons and Makeup with Daisy. Or something, probably. Oh, I don't know what I'm on today. I wore the right t-shirt though, because I'm definitely a bit, a bit cray cray today. Alrighty, so I'm going on the other side. A crossover arm. I'll do a little bit like this, but then I'll move my hand. You just have to find whatever feels comfortable for you, don't you? And I think that sometimes I'll do mine and it's because I don't want to hold my, don't want to lean back and hold my hand up too much. And I don't even notice that I've, I've got that habit or that, uh, you know, found that way to do it. It's just happened sort of by osmosis or something. But yeah, let's see. I always think of the Phantom of the Opera when I do that face. Or Edvard Munch's The Scream. See? Art knowledge as well. Okay. There's a small boo-boo over there, but basically what I've done is put the first coat on and I'm hoping that like basically what I've what I've hoped from what I was hoping to achieve from this mascara is a nice separation um, I'm leaving it for a bit because I don't want to go straight in with the other mascara but my intention is then oh, wrong, wrong mirror when you have too many mirrors and you get mirror blind or something is that a thing it is now um, uh, what I'm hoping to achieve by putting the second coat of a thicker mascara is to make my lashes stand out a bit more. And I have to say, as the shadow has dried and I'm, I'm getting used to it, um, there's also in, in this particular palette a very dark navy and a might... I might go in with some of that right in the corners. We'll see. We'll see. I am. Um, I'm a bit of a a tweaker and a, a fiddler, so I don't tend to like go straight in and say, "Right, I'm just using those three shadows." I'll have a look what they look like, and then I think, mm, "A little bit there." Or what if I put this there? So it's all very experimental with me, anyway. I'm not sure if everybody else does that. If they're a lot more decisive, but well done if you are. Um. But I'm not very dis decisive. Right, so that's had a little bit of time. I'm now going to use my next favourite, which is Essence Princess Lash, because we are princesses, you know what I mean? And this, I found, it is a, is a thicker, slightly thicker formula. Um, so it's good for a second coat if I'm looking for and when I've used colours as bright as this that's a more intense look rather than just a nude or a day-to-day -day look then I want those lashes to be there without having to reach for the falsies which I've worn falsies but I'm not particularly um, good at putting them on so it's literally going to be if I'm going to a wedding or something like that so I'm just touching over the ends where that, uh, the previous mascara has given me a good separation. This is giving me a bit of a darker. Yep, that's working. And same on this side. Sorry, my lovelies. I am sorry, my lovelies. So, whoops. Try not to get too much all over your brow. sometimes 
can I just ask, while you're watching this, do you hold your breath like I do? <laughs> do you go, well, I'm putting the mascara on. <laughs> right, okay. I've just noticed as well on a look up close there that I might need a bit of that lilac putting in because it's not, it's not as even as I'd like it to. Now, I think that's slightly better, that uh, eyelash. I'm going to put a little bit on the bottom. But I quite like the bottom lashes to look a little bit more wispier. And my go-to is to put something light underneath those bottom lashes. You can see them better. Otherwise, if you've got straight up dark and you're doing a full on smoky eye, you can't see your bottom lashes anyway because they don't stand out, do they, against the um, thing. So there you go. I think I'm happy with that. Ha! So finishing off, I'm going to get a nice fine brush. This one's got an angle, a slight angle, and what I'm going to be doing is just making sure, should have done it before the mascara, but just making sure that you can see that that purple goes right up to my lash line and it's a little bit uneven at the moment, so I'm going to go right at my lash line and put that in. Make sure it's nice and even. Yeah, that's better. It's better. Northerners tend to make their T's into B's, into D's, I mean, so we say better instead of better. This eye wasn't too bad anyway, but I've gone in and checked it. Let's get that out. There you go. Now, I've just realised that after I put that second coat on, I didn't wait long enough. <laughs> so I've got some specks up there. So I'm just going to see if I can get those off quickly. Ah, uh, ha, perfect. Um, I did that. If you're trying to get specks off, little specks, and you've already got your shadow on, uh, it's better to go in with a totally dry Q-tip. Don't wet it because you wet it, you get it everywhere. Now, what I'm finding is I've got this crease here, and the way that the colour is, it's making it look like I've got a weirdness there. So I might do a little bit more a weirdness. It's a technical word. Do a little bit more blending there just to compensate for the fact that it's starting to crease. It's not, it's not doing too bad, this at all. Nearly there. How are we all diddling? Let's have a little look. You definitely hold your breath, do you, Carla? I, I do when I'm watching other people putting makeup on and they're going, then I do. I do it with them. It's it's crazy, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! Right. So. That's the eye look I've done. You know what I've forgotten? Brows. Okay. Because I don't want to get another palette out and I said I was just going to use this one, I might do my brow with just... A little bit of the purple that could look awful <laughs> but let's see so I'm gonna use just a little bit when I'm doing my brows I just have the tiniest bit on the end and I'm just gonna do a little bit of filling with the purple I know crazy in it what are you thinking Babes, you're 56. Don't have purple eyebrows. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, besides, you've only got my birth certificate to say that I'm 56. <laughs> and I've got that. So everybody else, whatever. You can't prove nothing. So, I have done. A very light purple brow there. Who knew? Hey, I'm going to do the other side as well. Ha <laughs> ha! Gleeful. 
gleefully being a little bit risky. So that's the, what all this is doing is just giving my brows a little bit of a coat because they're a bit salt and pepper. I do actually have quite, you know, thick brows. I never plucked them, I never did anything to them when I was younger, not a thing. Um, and that's why I've still got some hairs left, no doubt. Um, but recently I have got some very prominent sort of blonde, blonder grey ones in there. So, use the same on your brow. Because I always have brow envy of, of these, these wonderful, um, especially like the graphic eyeliner looks. I love those. I don't think I could manage them because my eyes are just that little bit too bumpy. It'd be like trying to have a straight line on some fur or something. Um, but I'm always a little bit brow envious of the bright coloured brows. One of our members, I think she's called Kiara, but I don't know how to spell her name. But anyway, I adore what she does with her brows. She's got amazing shapes on there. Adore it. So this is just my little tribute then to those more adventurous brows. Right, I actually quite like that. I don't care if it's like, oh my goodness, she's got purple brows. You're right. You're right, I have. Let's get my hair sorted. What are we thinking? It's not too bad. Now, last thing, last thing of all, I might put a little bit of that lilac, just a little bit, just up there at the brow. And the only reason I'm saying that is because I have genuinely tried to not use anything else of my palettes. Um, I just wanted to use this one. And that's probably the, the colour that would be best for under there. So I'm going to do a tiny bit there. Not lots. Another thing I've learned since I've been on the Hooded Eyed Beauties is that I, when I was younger, I would have had like highlight on that entire great big podgy bit there. That would have all been highlight, all of it, just all of it, highlight. Um, and I've learned now just to have a little line up at the top near the brow. So I'm going to try that out. It might be that, although this has got a nice shimmer on it, it's a bit dark, but we'll give it a go and see what it looks like. Excuse me while I dive in my mirror. So, right up here at the top there, I've just got a really fine brush and I'm just putting a teeny bit of that lilac. You can already see it, can't you? Yeah, you can. Yeah, that's good, baby. Ah! I'm so excited. That's nice. Yes, I like that. So, not loads, the teeniest amount right as if you're just underlining you know like you used to do in your science books in four different shades of felt tip yeah you know you know what i'm talking about when you were doing your studying and you had to change your pens every you know three seconds oh yeah oh yeah what do we think i like that as well now um I think I'm actually done there. I will likely, would you like me to carry on and put the rest of my face on in the live or are you happy for me to just stop the live and I'll do the face later? I'll look down to see. Nobody's saying yet. I can carry on with my face if you want and put the rest of my face on. I was going to do lips and stuff. So I'm going to carry on. Well, let me see what the time is. 45 minutes already just to put my eyes on. That's well bad, isn't it? Yes, rest of the face on live. Okay, Rachel, I'll blame you if anybody moans. Okay, so I am not going to use the ordinary shade that I used for my lids because it's slightly light for me. And I think that that will look a bit weird with a very intense eyeshadow. So I'm going to go with... Um, Mm, yeah, I've got I've got a, a translucency one um, that is a Boots number seven one, intelligent colour. That actually, I think it might be like I've heard people from the states talk about BB creams. I think this might be like that. It's kind of weird. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever put on. You put it on, it looks really dark, but it just gives your face a matte, and it's extremely translucent. So I'm just gonna have a go at that and do a little bit of that. 
not much but a little bit right so a little bit on there um oh, look how dark that is you think oh she's messed up there but i haven't a uh, big swipe fade that all out gives me a nice little matte thing and I know my cheeks get red when I've done that it's just the rubbing I know it'll settle down there so same on this side it looks really dark but it's actually like just the pigment with not much um, filler it gives me a nice healthy sort of glow look Excuse me if I'm looking over there, I've got another stand-up mirror there. And I think it's always better to look from far away when you're doing your foundation, you get a better look at the whole of it. So I've just put a lightweight one on. But I am possibly going to patch up a little bit. Um, not with this one. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. And you have too many of the same brand and you can't recognise each of the bottles. This one is uh, Ordinary Serum Foundation again, but um, in shade 2.0p. So that's like one darker than my natural one. But I'm going to use that anyway, just to do a little bit on my bags. A little bit, not much. Because as we all know, if you put too much on them, they can look worse, can't they? But a little bit. And I'm a dib, dib, dibber. Just dib, dib, dib. Because I don't want to go over the eye stuff. But I know. That this easily blends in. It's lovely stuff. It's really light. There you go. A little bit on there. You always get um, a bit of my cheek there that looks a little bit pink so I'll pop that on there right brill a little bit of a dib 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 on the other side now can you see I can see the difference there yeah and apologies on my little bumps bumps and dumps I think I've probably said before that they are um, as a result of heart issues that left me with a bit of a cholesterol under the skin there and I like them they're part of me but you can't they don't actually disappear when you get a little bit healthier and I am a lot healthier now since they appeared to give me that little shout to say what's your health Deborah Daisy Deborah whatever uh, but they don't go away they stay there and remind you <laughs> just be careful okay now a little bit on my chin so I've always got a little pink chin well I'm sure I used to be like a little pixie or something little pink chin get that a little bit covered up oh yes remember you've got a forehead <laughs> that's the other thing that I often neglect so I've got a little bit of foundation on my finger there and I'm just doing a little bit just above just done a little bit just above my um, eyebrow there excuse me a little bit of a runny nose there a little bit more I won't be long ducks get yourself a brew if you're getting a bit bored and everything you'll be fine I'd have one but I need soya milk so just remember that make me a brew a bit of soya milk Alrighty, I'm not putting too much up there because it's going to be hidden by my lovely lilac fringe. Yeah, that's looking quite even now. Let me sort out my hair. <laughs> Alright. Blush, lips, and we're done. Blush, blush, blush. Choo, 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 choo. Blush, blush, blush. Blush. Yeah, I didn't get it out. You know why? Because I thought I won't need my blush. So I'm just doing eyes. Blush. <laughs> I've got um, Mac Cream Color Base Cheek Number One Three One. Pink. 
<laughs> I'm so surprised, Daisy, that you're using pink. I am so shocked. I am shocked. Right, pink. Let's get some of that pink on. I'm trying to both rush and not rush. Blush smile. And I always go to the front. A little bit more these days. Another thing I learned from joining Hooded Eyed Beauties, because when I used to um, do my blush previously, um, then I would do it just at the side here and it sort of left a great big expanse of white. Didn't look as nice as putting it a bit further forward. So blush smile and up there. I've not put much blush on though, but just a little bit of colour. There you go. It's coming on. Oh, the faces we pull. <laughs> right. Highlighter. Ooh, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo. Highlight me up. Got a little bit in this little blush palette here, so I'll use that. Just, I'm going to use the highlighter. The blusher is too orange for me, but the highlighter is nice. So. I'm actually using the same brush, but it's more because on the live I didn't want to spend too much time looking for my other brushes. So, highlighter. Done. I'm getting silly now. I apologise. I'll take things seriously. Sorry. Bit on my nose. You gotta do your ends of your nose, haven't you, for a highlighter? Bit on my chin. On my jawline, such as it is with my little chubby cheeks. Now, would you like a dark lip or a light ombre lip? My speciality. I'm gonna do you an ombre lip with um I'm going to use this one, which I think is called Prayer. So I'm going to do um, a dark outline. In this kind of mulberry shade. That will blend a little bit when I put the um, the lighter colour on. Okay, outline it in a dark colour called Prayer Plum, sort of a plummy colour, aubergine, aubergine, and it looks really into, I can't get it back in my space now, god damn, and, and then to my favourite ever lipstick, 404 Prismatic Pink, oh sorry, back there. Prismatic pink anyway from L'Oreal Creme and it is exactly that. It's like a, let me show you, a lovely prismatic lilac here, a bit like the eyeshadow in there that I've used. So that's going straight over the top. I know that it'll mess up my uh, lipstick but I'll clean it off after.
You like? I do. Um, I will take my tissue though and clean that off a little bit. Because I know from experience that if I do put it away with some of that darker lipstick left on, I'll forget to go back to it later. So clean it off now. There we go. All cleaned off. Wait. So that is Prismatic Pink. I use that so much. It's such a go-to for me over all sorts of um, shades and on its own. On its own, it's the most delightful little lightweight, translucent, lilac-y pink thing. I think I've got about four of them. <laughs> and I have one in my handbag and one there and whatever. So we're getting there now. What are we thinking? Can I pose for you? a few daisy poses there I might just to fix that lipstick a little bit more take that exact lilac that I've got on my eyes on my little finger and I'm gonna put it on my lips mm, nice <laughs> I need a disco to go to now, really. It's quite a disco look, this. How's that? I'm really loving it. Um, so, I think that's more or less towards the end. I kind of don't want to say ta now. But um, thanks for joining me. I've had a really brilliant time. I will, as usual, do a few pics of the finished look and um, in full pose because you know how I like to pose <laughs> and possibly with different pairs of glasses on even and everything um, and I'll post them to the group later um, I hope you've enjoyed it I hope maybe you might invest in some of that medical tape this cost me all of 85 pence so I just think it's a cheap way to explore with it and you might want to invest in those ones that are a little that are already shaped um, but if you wanted to, like me, just to see if they suit you or you find them useful, you could use something really easy like that and um, just play around with it. Thanks a lot, everybody. I shall see you on the interwebs. <laughs>